Hello YouTube world, welcome back to my workshop. Project I'm going to do for you this week is this bowl. Resin, sported beach. I had some sported beach, uh, I did a couple of projects with it, three projects with it, um, and this was some odd bits that I had left over, it was odd shape piece, and I've cut it all up into segments, chucked it in a bowl, and poured some resin in there. Now, I've never done resin before. I've had a little dabble with small pieces, but I've certainly never done anything this big before. So it'll be quite interesting to see how this turns out. This is how we start off each one of my wash mixing bowls. Looks like a brand new one actually. There we go. And what I have is um, some sported beach. You can see in there, there's all those lines running through there. What that is, a start of the process to break the wood down, that's a fungus. It grows inside of the wood like a mould fungus and that's what actually breaks the wood down. In most woods you get fantastic pattern. It's what they call sported um, and you, it does give you beautiful colour variations through the wood. It is beautiful. But as I say, once it dries out it all dies off and all you're left is with those beautiful markings. And if you seal it with wax or oil or something like that, that stops any moisture getting in there. So that's, it will stay like that for, well, I wouldn't say forever, but quite a long time. So how I'm going to do this, I had some left over and it did look too nice to chuck away. So I've cut it up in some chunks. I'm going to put it in this bowl and then I'm going to pour some resin in there. Let it go off and see what we end up with. Let's <coughs> fry it because it actually makes a very good releasing agent. Again, raising my wife's kitchen. So we go, fry light, only one calorie. Not only does it make a good releasing agent, it's good for you as well. Okay, and then I'm going to line this with wood. So as you can see, I'm just lining this with some of these off cuts of wood. pieces on the bandsaw just to fill There's quite a large void in there and put some in there so I'd rather have wood in there than resin. Okay so I cut a few pieces in just to fill in the old gaps because I've, what I've then done turned that to sit in there there's a resin saver so what we do now fill it with resin and then just sit back and let it go off. Then the resin I'm using is Glasgow House 50. The last number 50 is the number that refers to how thick that you can pour your resin because they do a 10 which is for really things like jewellery, uh, tabletop, stuff like that because what happens is with the resin when you mix the hardener and the resin together it creates heat when the chemical process starts it creates heat and if you try to cast something that's quite large with the resin 10 it gets a lot hotter and you'll find that all it'll do is actually just cracks open whereas the 50 has got a much slower curing temperature um, which allows it which allows you to cast much bigger objects so that's what I've used I've only just really got into using resin um, I've tried to I think there's about a third one I've tried and this is the best one I've found so far it generally cures with no bubbles uh, which means you don't have to buy a pressure pot or anything like that which I mean they can be quite expensive on their own 
Uh, I mean, if you're going to get into res custom resin in a big way, then I'd suggest buying one. But I only use it occasionally just to um, try and enhance some of my wood. I mix my resins by weight, and it says the instructions are on there. If you mix it by volume, you do 100 of resin to 50 hardener, and by weight is a uh, 100 to 45. So, this is the actual resin. It's a little bit over 200. And this is a hardener, so I'll put 200 in there because so I need. So, I need 90 grams of hardener in there so that'll take me up to 302 what I'm gonna add today is my daughter brought me for Christmas some shin metallic effect resin powder pigment let's go through this red one sorry I'll get back to you in a minute when that's all mixed up. That's the first mix. It's quite a nice effect. So if it looks like that when it dries. So there we go. It's going to be my first pour. See how far that goes. Dripping down the side. That's going to take an awful lot of resin. That's the second pour. Third pour. Well, there we go with tubers. How does that make you resin tubers? One or the other. Biggest pour I've ever done. Oh, let's say 3.45 kilogram tub of resin I've used there. Um, probably use probably about two thirds of that. Uh, I did it all red. It's quite nice. It's quite a sparkly sort of red. And you've got the advantage over me because you've already seen this and I haven't. So let's hope it turns out nicely. Eh? But so far, so good. Uh, I don't know if you see on top of there, that's a big old lump of lead I've got on top of there, just holding that all down. Because that resin at the moment, before it uh, goes off, is a fluid. And that's wood, and as we know, wood floats in fluid. So there we go. Let me just sit back and wait. Well, 
Welcome back to the Workshop YouTube world. It has been but a blink of the eye in YouTube time, but in actual fact it's been about two months ago since I bought this. Um, I've had all sorts of problems. My lathe broke down, I was told it couldn't be repaired, and then it was repaired, but in the meantime I've been out and bought a new lathe. Um, so I've been busy getting that all set up. So this project will now be the very first time that I've used my Galaxy Nova. I'm now the proud owner of. Nice bit of kit it will. Okay, so this is it. The stun in the bolt. Looks quite nice. I did take it out of the workshop. I took it up indoors because when I did it, we were having some. It was quite cold weather when I poured this. Um, you might also notice I've had my post lockdown air cut for the first time as well, which is nice to get rid of all of that. should get a refund really because there's not so much to cut up on top there anymore. Don't know mind. Such is life. Um, yeah, so I did take it up, up uh, indoors. Um, but I would say to anybody that because I had it on the dining table, make sure you do put it on some um, coasters or something like that because it generates a lot of heat. It really does. I was quite surprised how hot that got. It did sink as well. Um, I'm guessing the wood must absorb it, um, and it sunk down about an inch. So I knocked up some copper. The main body of it is red. Uh, I sort of wish now that I'd mix some other colours in there with it as well, just to give it a bit of contrast. But we'll see when I take it out of the bowl. Uh, as, and as I said, top about an inch and a half. I did with copper, so that would give it a nice contrast. Well, we'll see what that looks like when it comes out. So, the ground unveiling. So let's see. This one come out. That's the other thing, I ain't had a cake. Or was but not been able to make me a cake. She can now. I'm sure that'll be alright. Look at that. You see the colours in there? see that copper as well because that was a metallic copper I put in there. I can't see that. I don't know where that's picking that up. There we go. <clears throat> so the first thing I need to do is find the centre. Um, I've got a hole in there but I'm not sure if that is dead centre. So what I'll do uh, get my measuring instrument tape find a dead centre and then we can make it on the lathe. So I've marked the centre on there, if you can see that, and it's just off centre of that. So I can't use a screw truck in there so I'm going to have to use a face plate. You've seen me use them before. So, so I'm going to use that face plate put that on there. Um, so there we go, I've got it made on the face, face plate, put it in the chuck. Uh, it's a shame actually because I want the actual wood to be showing and not this 
So most of this I'm going to turn away, but hopefully there'll be enough left of it to show up. All right, first thing I'm going to do is turn the tenon in the bottom of there, so uh, I can turn that around and then hollow the bowl out. So let's turn some wood. All right, we'll set to 500. That'll do for me to turn the tenon in there. We're just starting to get a little bit of wobble on there now. So face shovel on. So we're getting down there. I mean, the whole object to this is I want to see the wood poking through. Oh, some big holes. Some big holes in that. Big air bubbles. So I'll keep taking that down a little bit more. The wood's starting to come through there. I'm just going to try that with a scraper on there because I'm pretty much going as far as I want to be because as pretty as that wood is coming through there I think that resin needs a chance to show in there as well so I'm going to go with a scraper clean all of this up see if I can get all that chipping out of there and then see what it looks like No wonder I was struggling to see what I was doing. And I've got all over the camera the lens. And that's what that big splodge here is. I've sharpened up the chisel. I'm going to give it a final cut up there. That's a bit ripped out there. Didn't like that very much. I think what it is, I don't like that scraper when I get back onto the wood. So I've sharpened it right up, I'm going to do another coat up through there, just clean all that up, and then I'll we'll start sanding it down. that stuff makes. Right. I uh, 
I'm going to have a quick hoover up and then I'm going to start sanding. I'm going to sand all that down. As I say in all my other videos, this is boring as hell to do and I bet it's even worse to watch. So what I'll do is I'll get back to you once I've finished sanding it and you can have a look at the final outside of the bulb. Then what we can do is turn it around and uh, we'll start our following. Okay YouTubers, I've had a bit of a tiny up. Blimey that resin and that, making a mess. Uh, so I've gone through, I mixed up some epoxy resin uh, with a little bit of that red dye in there. Gone around and filled the holes up, sanded it all back down again. Um, put sand sealer on and then I put some wax on. So it has come up quite nice. I quite like that. So what I'm going to do now is just hollow the inside. Um, that was, I didn't realise at the time, but that was a lump of oak in there and that's going to be quite hard. Although, uh, it's just a matter of hollowing all that out now. So let's get to it. When you go into there with a push cut, the chisels come flying off just where you've got your hand. Just where I've got my hand and the, they come flying up at the side of your little finger and it's like being shot blasted. That's really painful. So I think I'm going to have to do that with a series of pull cuts because it directs the chips away in a different direction. Here you can see, I changed the angle camera to give you a better view as I'm just hollowing the bowl out. Now what I'm doing, I'm doing this in sections. And that's with a series of push cuts and pull cuts. So I'm basically I'm taking it down the side and then taking a bit in the middle. And then I should end up with like a V in the bottom of that, that piece in the middle. As you see, I'm coming in as far as I can down the side. And then I'll take the piece out in the middle. What that does, it gives the bowl a lot more rigidity, a lot more stability. So as you cut down, because if you do it, if it was a smaller bowl, you could take it out of the middle and then work your way to the outside. But because it's resin, because it's made up of pieces of wood where it's all segmented, um, it's probably not the strongest thing in the world. Um, so I'm not sure how strong that resin would grip to the wood. So I didn't want to take any chances with it. So if I took it a bit at a time, left some strength within the bowl, um, I could just gradually work my way through. I have sped this up to four times its normal speed. Can you notice I'm using my body? Um, they say when you're wood turning, your chisel should have four points of contact. So there's the bevel, which is just behind the cutting edge on the tool. You have the actual tool rest itself that the tool sits on. And then you have the handle that you should wedge up tight against your body. And then when you turn, you should be moving your body to make the direction of the cuts. As you can see, the piece with the tool rests rest up against my body. I've actually cultivated that to give me the biggest surface area I possibly can, just for the handle to sit against. Funnily enough, there's a lot of wood turners who've managed to cultivate that part of their body. 
here I'm coming down now I'm just taking the center out I've got down really as far as I can go and rather than take it all in one go what I'm doing is I'm undercutting the center piece and eventually that will just snap off I did make the mistake of the bowl saver I just grabbed a piece of wood um, at my store uh, there was a big split in it so I just used that and I didn't really think about it at the time but that's a piece of oak and that is really hard um, in a minute when that stops you'll see there's like a big brown dark core of that wood it's absolutely rock hard and the white piece around the outside is quite soft I'll remove the centre corner now you can see that brown piece in the middle that is so hard to cut and the outer bit is so soft and you end up with almost like a machine gun effect where you hit the soft, hit the hard, hit the soft, hit the hard Now I wouldn't normally do this, I would just hold it away, but that black heartwood there is absolutely rock hard. So I think what I'm going to do is take that out with a force in a bit. I'd say generally I wouldn't do that, but uh, I'll just hold it all out with a chisel. That's so hard. And the trouble is I can't turn that up. You really want that to roll a little bit faster. Because obviously when you're turning, if that's doing 100 revs per minute, say, that outside will be moving at something like 40 mile an hour. But that piece in there hardly is hardly moving. So you don't get the speed to for the cut. So let's turn that off and I'll come back to you in a minute. As you can see, I've drilled in there with a, um, I think it's about a 40 mil force in a bit. So it's just taking that hard piece out in the middle. And that's to give me a bit of a fighting chance just to take that through to the centre. You still see on the outside that's turning quite fast. I get a quite a good cut on there. It's just that really hard oak in the middle that I was struggling with. I've had to take that down. I'll we'll probably have to go back in there and do another cut in a minute. I've also changed my chisel. Um, I'm using the bolt gauge on this. It's, it's a different angle. It's a much flatter angle. It's down to um, something about 30 degrees, I think it is, as opposed to 40, 45 degrees for the other gauges that I use. And it allows you to do to work across the bottom on a much flatter cut. So 
So I'll gradually just continue this, just gradually work it away. Until, until all of that oak's gone. And that should start to expose the resin and the beech chips in the bottom. I've sped this up to 400 or four times speed. If only wood turning was this quick. Well, I guess that would take the fun out of it. I did find that when I started coming through the bottom of that oak, there was a lot of air bubbles in the bottom of there. Um, and I guess that is a, um, a lesson, really, something that I should learn from it. What I should have done, after I made my first pour of resin, I should have picked up the bowl with the wood in and just gently agitated it from side to side because what's happened is the air has been trapped underneath the wood. Whereas if I'd picked it up and just gently rocked it from side to side, those air bubbles would have come out and worked their way to the surface. As I said before in the video, if you were going to do any of this, I think if you put it in, you could buy yourself a large pressure pot and that actually sucks all the air out of it. Maybe that's something I might invest in in the future. If you see now, after I've put that forcing bit in, it's hollowed out a lot easier. And I'm working my way down through, just gradually taking the oak out and exposing the resin and the spotted beach. Just a tiny bit left in the bottom there now. I changed my tool here. I went to a half round scraper. The scrapers do seem to work a lot better on this resin. It leaves a much not, uh, much cleaner finish. Although it's such a not not such a heavy cut, and it does give a very clean cut. Well, you know, I've hollowed it all out. Just rough sanded it, and then there was some hundred grip. Just sand it down, but you can see it's certainly starting to take shape. But I've got a massive hole in the bottom there. You can see it there, just there. It goes right the way through. So. A little bit more epoxy resin. There's a few other holes in there as well. There's a bad, bad ones. Uh, where are we? Yeah, about the front there. They want filling and sanding down. There's a couple of other small ones in there. But that is starting to look pretty nice. The light shines through that. Alright, we'll sit here looking at that and we'll finish up. Well, I managed to turn all the middle out. I've sanded it all down to 800. I've had a devil a job of that with bubbles and trying to fill them and trying to sand them away. I've still got a couple in there now. Not quite. So I'm going for Yorkshire grit now, and then just polish out that Yorkshire grit, sand and sealer, and then polish it, and then we'll see what that looks like at the end of that. So Yorkshire grit first.
trying to get you in there with you. Dust that, that generates is unbelievable when you start sending that. Let's stay in my t shirt up. I think what I need to do if I do another resin bowl, I certainly need to invest in a pressure pot because that would have got rid of all those air bubbles in there. But I'm going to sand and seal it. Machine. <laughs> Pretty much that finished. Need to turn it around, take the spigot off the back. And that'll do. I'm done. So, there it is, YouTube Rod. That's the finished product. Quite pleased with it. For the first resin bowl, it's not bad. It's not. You know, we're aiming for perfection really, and now uh, I've got some air bubbles inside, which does detract from it. It's lovely wood, and that is lovely, the colours in that resin. overall I am quite pleased with it. So thank you very much for watching this video and if I had another great day in the workshop you bet your life I have. Thank you very much. Bye bye.